Hello everyone, I am that 3D guy and before starting this video, I'd request you to please subscribe to this channel. It encourages me to create videos like these. And uh, I would also request you to check the previous videos out uh, which I have created. It will give you a better view of what we are going to do today. Uh, so you are going to know a lot more about curves, you are going to know a lot more about the basic surfaces and maybe even the basic workflow failures in the previous videos. The previous videos were quite long but uh, they were quite informative as well. So maybe you can go and check it out and uh, come back over here and maybe take a look at uh, the video which I am going to do right now. So the links of the videos are there in the description box below and uh, I hope you like it and let's get on with this video. So in this video we are going to start with something which is very basic like we are going to start modeling something. So we won't discuss about something in this video, we will be model we'll start modeling something. Uh, simultaneously we will start looking at some of the tools as well in this uh, in this video. Then I have also decided to make these videos a bit shorter. So it won't be a 40 minute long video which you will have to uh, sit in one place and just uh, take a look at the whole video in one go. But it will be a 5 part kind of a video where uh, maybe I can do a part and then you can try to repeat it. You can, you, you'll have maybe a, a day of uh, work to be done like something which you can take up to yourself that okay maybe uh, I have done my job of maybe explaining you how this thing is to be done and then you can try to replicate it in one day. So I think by the end of the 5 days we will be properly be able to model an iPhone 11 Pro. Yeah. So that is the aim which we have uh, till uh, the 31st of December. Right. So each and every day we will try to model uh, some of the parts. We will go part by part. Any doubts you can just post it in the comments box below. I will try to fix them out and uh, maybe clear the clear those doubts as well. So if you can see in this model it looks pretty easy. Uh, like as a 3D modeler I am saying that but it's not. It's not. Uh, it's often said that looks can be deceptive and that's the main thing which you can see over here. It looks like a cube but there are a lot of details involved, a lot of minute details involved, a lot of small things you need to take care about. So it's all about like how can you make a cube look as interesting as possible, right? So why a lot of people are buying an iPhone is not because of the, just because of uh, the shape but also because of the aesthetics, right? It's a lot of aesthetical uh, aesthetic, aesthetically appealing things which uh, people find uh, interesting about. So we are going to try, try to replicate those, in those into the 3D model as well. So the main thing which you need to focus on the uh, focus on while you are modeling is the realism, right? If the models are not realistic, your renders are not going to come out realistic. So we are going to take a look at how we are going to take how we are going to make our models look a bit more realistic. And how can we do that by making fillets like making very tiny fillets wherever possible trying to ca capture each and every detail what we see. So that's how uh, realism comes right. In the first part of the video we are going to talk about placing the canvas, how we are going to place the different images or uh, how we are going to place it in a scale uh, in an appropriate scale. So scaling is the major part when it comes to alias right. Scaling is the major part when it comes to alias It's because uh, if the scale is not correct, if the scale is not correct, then it is very difficult to transfer the file from one uh, one or uh, maybe one uh, software to another. So it becomes very difficult. So here I have opened the basic uh, work uh, like the default workspace in alias. And you can see uh, how many things are laid up, right? So the uh, software I am using to place these uh, images are, are uh, pure ref, is pure ref. I will put that link in the description as well. And it's quite useful because you just need to drag and drop all the images and uh, it just uh, like automatically adjusts according to the screen. So that's one of the best things I like about this software. It's completely free. And the images I've taken, I mostly go for the blueprints.com if I want to do something. Mostly as a, a designer, I usually get designs from my, uh, maybe from the transport designers. So I usually don't have to go on to these sites, but for this, Specific uh, maybe model I'll be going uh, in the for blueprints.com if I have something specific I'll go for this website. Uh, it, I do not need to spend the money to maybe purchase these blueprints because I just need to have the basic it's you see how low resolution it is but we don't care about that because we just need to trace it around and maybe work around it. So if you have a basic workflow if you know okay maybe we have the dimension and everything ready that's the best part of it. 
we'll try to keep this video short so that uh, maybe you, you are able to follow along with what i'm saying right and uh, you'll be able to try to replicate those things in your uh, maybe workspace as well so we have alias open over here i have also created three of these images if i open these images you'll see that these are quite tiny uh, small resolution images but we don't care about this because we just need to work around uh, the file we have right we can just scale it uh, big or small and it won't be very precise obviously it won't be very precise but we need to try to capture as many details as we can see we'll also take some pictures from the internet as references which we'll talk about in the next videos and then try to recapture those things in this uh, in the in the model right so i went to photoshop and i cut out these images i cropped these images yeah i cropped the three images over here the front the side and the back these were the main uh, i thought which were required the others can be uh, manipulated uh, uh, along with the views which we are getting so that's not a big deal we can even cut out the bottom if you want to uh, when we need it uh, later so that's not a big deal as well so uh, the first thing that we need to do is maybe create a bounding box so what is a bounding box bounding box is nothing but a box under which we know okay this thing is not going to extend uh, maybe beyond this right maybe beyond this uh, object it's not going to ex uh, like maybe expand so that's the best thing uh, about uh, the bounding boxes we have a boundary around uh, inside which our object is going to stay so we are going to take the dimensions over here we are going to take the dimensions over here we can see the uh, height of 150.9 the width of 75.7 and the smaller width which is like the thickness of it is like 8.3 mm right so we need to keep these things in mind while modeling or uh, it needs to be as precise as we can uh, as we can go so we go into the palette to create the bounding box we'll first create a new layer we'll create a new layer and we'll double click on it to rename it and this bounding box yeah or uh, don't forget to maybe you in 3d software is when you are naming something naming layers or something uh, if it's better if you put underscore instead of uh, placing a space because that's the that's one of the most basic rules that you do not put uh, like spaces in between or maybe some other unusual characters right uh, it's better to keep everything very close maybe i just i don't usually use spaces so it's okay for me but if you want to use spaces you can use underscore in in the name of spaces you can just use underscore right so i just use bounding box uh, as a layer and i go into surfaces and i hold the sphere and you see there's a small box which opens as soon as i hold the sphere i hold the sphere and the small box appears so i just select the cube over here and i place it randomly in the world that's that's not a big deal we just place it randomly just left click on it then we move the object around by control uh, shift and uh, middle mouse button for me for uh, to move and we use alt and left click to move it uh, to grid snap it so alt and left click is for grid snapping it can be used for points it can be used for an object or uh, wherever the uh, pivot is placed right so we'll move it to the, to the center of the uh, grid over here we'll go back to the dimensions so how are we going to adjust the dimensions we can obviously scale it like this we can non proportional scale it like this but we want exact dimensions right i spoke about exact dimensions and the exact scale so what we are going to do is we're going to pick this object control and five you see there's an no information window over here so the main thing is control and 5 you see over here control and 5 so we uh, you, a small information window opens you see the transform window you see the pivot info you see the bounding box info yeah so you can even switch on the bounding for box for this obviously this is a bounding box which we are creating so we do not need to do that then the transform info uh, where we can you see how the values are changing and it's it's up to four decimal points so that's like quite a lot that's quite a lot and it's in mm so you can see how much it is uh, like how much it is going up to right so the first thing which we need to see is maybe we'll just take the scale over here you see oh uh, it's 150.9 it's 150.9 on the z axis so we'll just 150.9 on the z axis you see how it uh, stretched up then the width is going to be 75.7 the width is going to be 75.7 which is the x axis 75.7 and 
the thickness of the uh, iPhone is going to be 8.3 mm, which is Y axis. Uh, we'll take a look at it again. It's 8.3, yeah. So it's 8.3 mm. And here we have it the basic shape of uh, obviously the bounding box of iPhone, uh, inside which our whole object is going to come, right? It's not going to uh, go uh, beyond this. So we'll just pick object. Maybe we'll make a duplicate of this. You never know. We'll use that as a modeling tool as well. We'll just assign it. Maybe as a model. We'll hide this one. We don't need it now. And we'll use it. We'll assign it over here. We'll select the state of it and we'll put it as reference. You see how reference. Now if I try to pick the object, it's not selecting because it's in reference mode. So we have this something like this, right? Now we'll try to place the, uh, we'll place the canvases inside it. So it's nothing, it's just similar way of uh, just dragging and dropping inside. We just go over here, we have the front over here, we'll drag it over here and we'll push it over here. It opened, but it's not fitting inside the box right now. We need to scale it down. We need to scale it down proportionally, right? So that the scale remains constant, like the scale on both the axes remains constant. So we are scaling it down. So you see how I move the pivot on the top left corner so that it allows me to match the pivot along with the uh, left hand side of this, right? You see how it's matching exactly on the top left corner of this and the small minor adjustments can be done along the way. So that's not a big deal. We'll just scale it like this. It's fitting. Obviously the black part is going a bit right on this. If you can see clearly what we will do is we'll just move it on the left. We'll just move it on the left. You see the buttons are also not being included in this, so it's okay. Yeah, so we have something like this. Now what we'll do is we'll make a new layer. We'll name this as blueprint front or maybe front blueprint, whatever. We'll name it front blueprint, right? And assign it over here and select state and reference. So we have the front blueprint over here already. Now we need to go into the side view and put the side reference over here. So we go over here, we do the same thing over here. We'll move the pivot on the top left corner. And you see it's quite big. So we'll just move it around like this. We'll try to adjust it so that One more thing which I wanted to mention is if you can notice that the object is very small. It's very small in regards to the grid, right? It's very small in regards to the grid. The reason is because this software has uh, specifically been created for automotive, automotive vehicles, which are very big, right? It's not an MM. And uh, if you see the iPhone is an MM. So it's, it's obviously the grid is going to be very big. When you start adjusting automotive, uh, automotive objects, it becomes, uh, make, it starts making sense. But Apple does use uh, alias. Apple does use alias to model uh, stuff. So yeah, because it's it's quite precise. It's quite precise. You can get pretty good surfaces on it. And I've adjusted this as well. We'll rename this as well. We'll make a new layer. Name the new layer as side blueprint. Right? We'll just place it over here. Assign and Maybe we'll go over here, select state and reference. So I've referenced this as well. Now we'll go into the back. We'll hide these two. We'll go into the back. We'll take the back over here. Do the same thing over here again. So it's nothing but just laying off the blueprints so that it becomes easier for us. It's a 15 minutes process, obviously. But it is very useful. Once you do this, it becomes very easy to like follow your modeling process. So I am doing the same thing again, setting up it on the top or left corner, the pivot, then again, scaling it down. Over here, the same problem. It goes on the left hand side a bit more. So we'll drag and push it a bit inside. Yeah. Maybe somewhat over here as well. Okay. So we have something like this. We'll maybe make another layer and back blueprint. Now, one thing which I want to uh, uh, maybe refer is 
that if you can see, we already have so many layers, we haven't even created anything. To clean this up, what we can do is maybe use folders, which I had spoken about in the previous two uh, lessons. Maybe we can go to layers, new folder. We can select these three layers. So to select these three layers, you can just hold shift and click over here. So you have, you see the blue boxes over here, you middle mouse button over here and three layers, it's showing you the three layers. You can just middle mouse button, hold it and put it inside the folder and then name it as blueprints. And you can go inside the layer using this one. Now you see the yellow one has been selected. So that is why you can select the yellow one, whichever the yellow one is. So the back blueprint is over here, which is like over here, which has been assigned. The front blueprint is over here, which is right now. Over here. So yeah. So we have the blueprints and everything ready for now and uh, I think we'll uh, stop the video over here. If you have any doubts regarding anything, you can just uh, mail me at that 3 dguy 23 at gmail.com and you can let me know about uh, your ways of doing it. Maybe you might have come across some of the interesting things which I might not have understood or maybe I might not have been able to explain. So maybe you can do something that uh, something like that as well. And uh, yeah, so maybe we'll stop it uh, over here for now. Uh, I hope you uh, you might have understood how to like maybe lay out the canvas for now. Uh, in tomorrow's video, we'll take it a, a one step further. We'll use, so we'll use the model which we have, like the basic box which we have to like start making it a bit more smooth. We'll give it a bit more volume. We'll make it a bit more interesting. And uh, I hope you like the video for tomorrow as well. And uh, yeah, one more thing, uh, I'd like to wish all of my viewers a Merry Christmas and uh, hope your uh, year goes well and uh, thank you.